Hello guys, my name is Pavel Křupla from BlenderFig.com and today I will be teaching you how to create this infinite star field which you are seeing right now. Uh, I don't mean the skybox in the background but the stars which are moving towards you if you are traveling in the scene. So I think this uh, effect is pretty neat and it adds just a bit of realism to your scenes. So I hope you will like it and let's go get started. So here we are in almost a blank project. Uh, I won't be creating here a skybox because uh, it's, it will take a long time. I will just assign a skybox to the camera. So go to add component, rendering and skybox and just drag and drop the skybox material. If you want to create your own skybox, uh, check out my YouTube channel. There is a tutorial on how to paint it completely in Blender. Uh, even if this one was a little bit tweaked uh, in Photoshop afterwards. And uh, the next thing uh, I will do is um, I will go again to to my website because another tutorial I did is for smooth fly through camera. So if uh, you go here, here is a download finished Unity package. I will download it and I do want to import not the scene but this fly cam script CS. So import and I will move it to the tutorial fol folder and select camera and drag and drop it here on the on the camera itself. Now when I press play you should be able to see that I can uh, move around the space here and actually let me start again. Yeah. It's not working. Why isn't working? Yeah, because probably this should be called main camera. Okay. <coughs> background black yeah now it's moving okay so we got a scene here surely I will maximize it on play and I can move around but because it's skybox the background's not going to change at all and we just want to add a star field here so if we move through the space there will be stars moving on the sides so first off we will create a particle system like this go to main camera this position is let's say it will be zero zero minus 10 it doesn't matter too much and the particle system will be 0 0 minus 9 let's say and I will drag and drop it to the camera to attach the particle system to the camera so now when I move the camera the particle system will move too so this is one good thing to know and to create the the star field uh, infinite one we will create a script here to the particle system so let's create a new script it will be C sharp script uh, and let's call it uh, infinite star field like this and in this script in the update function we will provide to the particle system a 
new set or, or the same set of the particles we want to control in our script so uh, this way we don't need the emission and we don't need the shape and we can disable looping and simulation space we will set rather world and disable play on awake this way we will just have a render which will define our particle system uh, or particle material which will be this default sprite which we have seen before so we can collapse the particle system because we don't need it anymore uh, to tweak it anyway and let's move this script here I will create here a new folder call it scripts just to this to want to be too messy and uh, I want I will change this script here and uh, the basic thing uh, where we want to start is with our particle system we want to be able to create the particles in a sphere around our current position here so we will do it this way first off uh, I will create a private transform let's call it dx and in the start assign uh, current transform to dx I believe this is for the performance reasons because if you call transform here uh, or use here in update function in every frame it will slow down much more than uh, if you keep the local stored variable in the script and then uh, we need to create a field of particles so let's call it uh, points and this will be again private so the type will be particle system dot particle field and called points and as it starts here the points will be equal to null so instead of calling uh, or creating the first points here in the start function we can uh, create again a private function and let's call it create stars like this and we can say in update if points equals null then call create stars like this and the whole thing is we want to tell to the particle system <coughs> after end of each update that uh, particle system dot set particles will be as we can see first parameter will be the field so this will be points and this, then it will be the size so points dot length okay this way we will have a field which we if we change it here in update function it will immediately the changes will appear to, uh, in the scene for the player and in the create stars function uh, uh, first off we want to initialize our points field so points will be new particle system to particle uh, and let's call it stars max which will be our first public variable okay so public in integer or let's say yeah let's call it stars maximum and uh, it will be by default it will be 100 for example doesn't matter and first off I will create the 
a stars particle I will keep them high or huge to be able to do debug it uh, well so actually later we want to change the size so public float star size will be 1.0 and here we will loop through the field and I why why is less than points no oh, points uh, stars max i plus plus and we want to create the all needed parameters for the for the each particle of the star so points i will be the current particle and we want to set position we want to set color and we want to set size so the size will be a uh, star size the color will be you can say color dot white for example or maybe a little bit better thing will be to sec, uh, set the alpha to so we can say new color and we will say this will be 111 and the last parameter will be alpha so 1 is a solid and the position will be uh, it will be sphere here around the around the camera so we can say we can use a function from random module which is called inside unit sphere which will give us random position inside the sphere we can multiply it by mm, star distance which will be the distance of the sphere where the particles should be so this is our next public float variable star distance and let's say this will be 10 let's don't write the f there so the star distance and this way the particles will spawn uh, around 0 0 0 and we want them to spawn around the camera or the particle system itself uh, which is attached here to the camera so we can uh, or we need to do uh, we need to add a transform or let's say the x dot position which will keep the particles here uh, around the camera so to, to test it out I can uh, now press play and you can see the particles are here in a sphere and they stick on the same place all the time but we can move through them later I will make them smaller but uh, let's leave them bigger for now uh, for better see where they are once they will be smaller uh, the star field will be much more <laughs> as a star field and uh, next thing uh, we want to do is once we move our camera or our particle system away from the from the radius we will take the stars which are outside of our sphere and respawn them or move them next to the camera again so I will and pause it and here we can just say in the update function that we want to check each particle so again a for loop for 
i equals zero, i is less than uh, stars max, i plus plus, and here check each particle and say, oh, let's check the distance. The, so the distance between our camera and the particle system or the, or the star will be, the star will be points dot position. This is the position of the star. And if we if we sub uh, tx position, I believe, yeah. This way we will get the distance from the st of the star from the camera. And if this distance will be higher than our star distance here, then we can move the star another place. So actually uh, the distance is called magnitude. But as you can see we have available this square magnitude here because if you remember from the math lessons the distance here will be square root from square this distance plus square this distance. But there is a square root and it's mathematically uh, quite expensive operation. So this square magnitude is without the square root operation. So if we can compare this value to the star distance you would have much more optimized solution or comparison here. But the star distance isn't square, so let's create a star distance square value and let's say this will be private float and in the start let's say star distance square will equal star distance multiplied star distance okay so now if the position of the current uh, star is too far away let's change the position again so let's say the new position will be and we don't need to think too much about it we can just copy this this line from create star so again random inside unit sphere multiplied by star distance plus the exposition which is the current position of the camera nice so now when I press play I got an error and it says particle system particle doesn't contain a definition for pos position yeah, i sure that there isn't any position. So position should now work. Okay, play. And you can see when I move forward, new particles or new stars appear and disappear if they are too far away. Okay, so let's change it a little bit. Here is the particle system and let's say the star size will be 0.2 and the star distance will be 100 and stars maximum will be 1000. So let's create 1000 stars inside of, of a sphere of a size 100 units. So now when I press play and I move, you can see we are moving through the stars and now I'm holding W all the time. You can look, rotate your view and this actually feels much more like 
space scene. So the skybox is still fixed, but you can see the stars are moving here. Another thing is uh, when we approach a star too close, like for example here, it can get too big. So we can do a check like we do with the distance uh, of the far distance and we can add a new clipping distance here mm -hmm. so let's say public float star clip distance will be let's say 3 5 I don't know 5 uh, let's say 1 doesn't matter and the same way we will create the star clip distance square value and the star clip distance value will be star clip distance multiplied by star star clip distance and what we can do is we can set let's say this is our camera once we here is the sphere, let's imagine the sphere and the stars are inside. Once the star goes closer to the camera, like here, for example here will be the clipping plane, so let's say from here above uh, the alpha value of the, of the star will be 1 and once it is a clip plane it will fade out with the alpha value until here the alpha value of the star will equal zero so it won't be visible to the camera because it's too close so we can implement it quite simply here and we can say if points on, let's copy this if the distance is less or equal star clip distance square then change alpha and maybe the size so this means uh, we first we, we will count the percentage of how much is it visible and we can do it simply by taking the position or the distance and multiply or divide it by 100% which will be our star clip distance square like this and now we can say that points i dot color will be new color 111 and the opacity will be the alpha value will be percent and we can even change the size and say size will be percent multiplied by star size like this now when I press play it should be nice and dandy <coughs> I move closer you can see the star is getting smaller but maybe the clipping plane is is too close so I will set it to 5 like this plus play and now when I go near the star can see it slowly gets smaller and this adds a bit of realism to the star field again maybe the spawning 
of a few stars is too close sometimes so we can fix it it's quite simple again and this will be here and this will mean that if we normalize this vector here it will be always of length of 1 so if we now multiply it by star distance it will reappear away from the center it will be the stars are now spawning uh, around the sphere at the distance all the time so this way they will appear much further away and uh, this should be much more realistic now and as you can see I can't get close too much to the star so I believe uh, this is it this way you can simply create infinite star field yoohoo so again as uh, as usual if you have any questions uh, just leave a comment here on youtube or on my on my blog the link for download uh, the script will be in the description underneath this video and thank you for watching